I've got a question. How long do you think we humans have? How long does the human race have? Ooh. Um. Oh, wow. I don't know exactly to know, but it might be soon. I have no clue. No. <laughs> I hope I give me at least 50 more years. I think there's infinite amount of time. It's it's infinite. Astronaut. It's infinite, yeah. I give us a million, a million years. Being kind, I would say probably about 10 years. 10, 12 years. Thousands of years. 47 years, three months, five days. It's approximate. We're kind of like cockroaches on the planet. No matter how much damage we'll do, enough of us will survive to procreate and keep it going. Yeah, unless we can get to another planet, but then we're just going to fuck it up like we did Earth. Well, I think that we will be here for a long time, but we will change. We're going to turn back into apes. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what would happen if a single species took over an entire planet? Maybe they're cute. Maybe they're clever. But lack a certain, shall we say, self-restraint? What if they go too far? What if they go way, 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 way too far. How would they know when it's their time to go? factories and automobiles every year of more than six billion tons of carbon dioxide and our atmosphere seems to be getting warmer this is bad well it's been calculated a few degrees rise in the earth's temperature would melt the polar ice caps and if this happens an inland sea would fill a good portion of the mississippi valley foreign weather we're not only dealing with forces of a far greater variety than even the atomic physicist encounters, but with life itself. That was 1958. We've known about the dangers of climate change for six decades. Back then, there was so much air pollution it would actually block out the sun. There was so much water pollution, rivers caught on fire. Forget throwing plastic bottles into the water. We tossed our cars in there. We also knew someday we'd run out of oil. For millions of Americans, this may be the worst weekend they've ever faced for finding gasoline to give them the automobile freedom they take as their due. I never doubted humans would find a better way, and I wanted to be part of it. A scientist sounded the alarm, and the modern environmental movement was born. Unless we do bring these chemicals under better control, we are certainly headed for disaster. Students all across the country organized the first Earth Day. At this point in time, it's very, very fashionable to talk about the environment, but as every day proceeds, we find very, very little concrete being done. 
As for me, you might say I was an early environmentalist. When I was nine years old, a bulldozer began knocking down the woods near my home. I retaliated by putting sand in its gas tank. When I grew up, I became a tree hugger and moved to the wilds of northern Michigan to build a sustainable homestead and commune with nature. I wired my cabin for solar panels and heated with wood instead of fossil fuels. I wrote about sustainable living and environmental issues for the Mother Earth News and several news outlets. I traveled the country documenting invasive species, ecosystem collapse, and species threatened with extinction. I covered protests against destroying mountains for coal. And was once even confronted by the BP police. You're a journalist? Jeff Gibbs, yeah. By all means, you can take all the pictures you want. Okay. We'll write a report, and then we have to send it to the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office. They'll call you. Through all of this, I kept wondering, why are we still addicted to fossil fuels? So I decided to begin following the green energy movement. What better place to check out how a renewable energy revolution is coming along than a solar festival in the green mountain state of Vermont, powered by 100% solar energy. Solar. I was having fun and got a chance to ask about getting solar panels installed. You can keep adding, so maybe every time you get a tax return, buy another solar panel. But then, a little rain began to fall. My cameraman noticed some commotion behind the stage. So the festival is run off solar energy primarily? Primarily. Um, we need to bring some of the stuff in just because uh, we want to make sure we have enough power to kill our uh, fancy toys and the inviting stage. But the biofuel generator wasn't enough. So they wound up plugging into the electrical grid that we all use. The other inverter operating is actually pulling power into the grid, charging the batteries. It's, it's running backwards from the way we originally intended to do it, but... That was disappointing. But after all, it had been raining. Maybe next time things would go better. Luckily for us, hope was on the way. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, change has come to America. Green activists across the country cheered when newly elected President Barack Obama rolled out a trillion dollar stimulus package with nearly a hundred billion dollars for green energy. Green was finally ramping up and everyone wanted to be part of it. President Obama brought in environmental activist Van Jones from the Apollo Alliance with shovel-ready projects. They've got to put up tens of thousands of wind farms. They've got to put up millions of solar panels. Former Vice President Al Gore, who had a few years earlier released an Oscar-winning film, shared his ideas with the president. We have the opportunity now to create jobs all across this country, in all 50 states, to repower America. Al Gore had already encouraged billionaire airline owner Sir Richard Branson to invest big time in green energy. Branson is pledging future profits from his airline to the tune of perhaps $3 billion. $3 billion, that's the B, to fight global warming. Is Al Gore a profit? <laughs> um, uh, I just spell profit. <laughs> 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 Investors came forward. 
Investor Vinod Khosla, known as the father of the cleantech revolution, has poured over a billion dollars of his own money into some 50 energy startups. Major banks were eager to get involved. By 2020, we think uh, renewables will require $395 billion on an annual basis. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was both on the board of major environmental organizations and was leading a green energy investment group. We build wind farms, we build solar farms. Once you build our plant, it's free energy forever. The Sierra Club received $50 million from billionaire and former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Their mission, fight coal and promote clean energy. So with the mayor's gift, here's what will happen. We'll have a large and aggressive presence in 46 states. It's time for America to find a new energy path, one that takes us beyond coal. And then Bill McKibben, one of the nation's leading environmentalists and author of a breakthrough book called The End of Nature, formed an organization called 350.org with the mission of igniting a global climate movement. Can I show off my necktie for a minute because they made it for me yesterday. It's got that 350 on it because it's the most important.